Madeleine Auerkirk and I'm one of the growers here at Canatrek's Brisbane facility. We run a perpetual harvest all year round, so every day as a grower looks totally different and I'm really excited to show you guys around the place and, and what we do here in a day. So I'll be taking you through our four greenhouses here today that cover each of the different stages of the plant's life. We've got propagation, vegetation and flowering. So we might as well start right at the very beginning and we'll go down to the propagation room and have a look what's happening there. So this is where it all begins, here in greenhouse two, where we keep all of our mother stock. This greenhouse contains all the genetics that we use to take cuttings from to grow out our commercial batches in the flowering greenhouses. These mothers stay in the vegetative light cycle, which means they get 18 hours of light per day, which keeps them growing leaves and shoots and branches, but no flowers. So the plants that are in here now are the product of pheno hunting. Over the last year we've been growing out different seeds and then the mother plants that remain are the ones that have desirable attributes like the structure of the plant, the size and density of the flower, also the terpene profile and the potency. The mother plants need to be pruned every couple of weeks. They grow really, really fast and we need to find a balance between keeping them at a manageable size and ensuring that there's enough shoots for us to take when we want to come and produce the commercial batch. Each table has its own number and each plant has its own unique identification code. So we've got a gun which connects through a system called Ample um, and we're able to scan each plant and assign it to the table where it's located. This information travels with all of the cuttings throughout their life right up until harvest and stays with the final product. This is really important because it allows us to trace the finished product back to the genetics that it came from. So once we've taken the cuttings off the plants, we prepare them and they make their way into the propagation room next door in Greenhouse One. They'll spend a couple of weeks in there developing roots uh, and then they'll be transplanted out into the vegetation greenhouse where they'll spend another two to four weeks. So we're here in Greenhouse One now. This is our vegetation space. This is where the plants are transplanted into larger sized coir blocks after they've come out of the propagation room, once they've got roots. The coir is essentially the husk off of the coconut shell, so the whole product is a yeah, byproduct of the coconut industry and it's totally biodegradable and really good for the environment. They receive 18 hours of light per day, which keeps them in a vegetative state, growing roots, shoots and leaves, but no flowers at this stage. When they've grown to have about six or eight branches, uh, we come in and we actually pinch the growth tip out of the plant. And what this does is it redistributes the hormones throughout the plant and it breaks the apical dominance. So instead of growing big and tall like a Christmas tree, it encourages lateral growth um, and, and bigger branches and more evenly sized colas on the plant. And this is important when we get through to flowering. Uh, because we're going to train them through the trellis netting. Uh, we start to introduce beneficial organisms at this stage. It's a really important part of our integrated pest management program. We don't use any chemicals on the farm, no pesticides or anything like that. We use predatory and parasitic insects and some biological products like fungis and bacteria and nematodes in the coir block. Um, so at this stage they get their first application of hypoaspis, which are a predatory mite that live in the soil and they'll feed on pests such as fungus gnat larvae and thrip larvae. From here, uh, the plants will be transferred over into greenhouse three or four, which is the flowering greenhouses. This is greenhouse three, one of our flowering greenhouses. Once the plants have finished their time in their vegetative light cycle, they move into here and the lighting hours are reduced from 18 down to 12 hours a day. There's shade screens in this greenhouse which come across the roof and drop down the walls creating a total blackout. So this signifies that the plant needs to start flowering and trying to reproduce. We use a method that's known as scrogging or screen of green. So we use these layers of, of trellis netting to actually manipulate the physical form of the plant and pull the branches out to the side which allows some of the sublateral shoots to come up towards the light um, and for light to penetrate deep down into the canopy. One of the key tasks in the flowering period is the defoliation or the removal of leaves. So we leave the sugar leaves on the plant 
and we remove all of the big fan leaves that are blocking that light from penetrating down into the canopy. Light penetration into the plant and onto the buds is essential for the development of quality flowers. We have lighting in here obviously which acts supplementally so if the sun is bright enough um, they will turn off but if it's overcast like it is now they'll come back on and make sure that the plants are getting all the light that they need. I come in here once a week and check through the whole crop for bugs and this determines what predators and parasites we release in here on a weekly basis. It's always better to be acting from a preventative space rather than a curative space because things can get out of hand really quickly, especially in the hotter months when the insects are reproducing more quickly. So there's a variety of different parasites and predators that we use in here. Uh, we use lacewings, Californicus are a predatory mite, and Montgerensis are also a predatory mite, and they live up in the canopy and they're really cool just working for us all day and night, moving around through the plant and hunting down those little pests that we don't want in our beautiful flowers. We apply a drench to the substrate, to the blocks of coir that the plants are grown in, and this contains a variety of different products, including beneficial fungi, mycorrhiza, different bacterias, and nematodes, which also act to consume and destroy soil-dwelling organisms. One of the benefits of using predators as opposed to chemical control is that the insect species can develop a resistance to chemical products, but they can't develop a resistance to being eaten. <laughs> Plants will spend about 8 to 12 weeks in here, depending on the strain, and we keep an eye on the development of the trichome. So they'll start to go milky, and then as they start to amber off, the cultivation team will communicate with the post-harvest and we'll decide the right time to harvest those plants. All of the greenhouses are connected digitally through to our central operating system. So from there, we can keep an eye on the temperature and humidity in the greenhouse, the moisture content, temperature and the electrical conductivity in the block or the amount of fertiliser that's currently within the block. That's how we program the irrigation, we can close the shade screens if it starts to get too hot in here and we can control all of those aspects. Once there's approximately 20% amber trichomes on the plant, the harvest crew will come in and cut them, take them down, strip all of the leaves off, put all the buds out on trays to dry in the drying room uh, and then they'll spend a couple of weeks in curing. Across the propagation, vegetation and flowering parts of the plant's life cycle, every step of the way is totally paramount to us being able to produce beautiful, top quality medicinal cannabis all year round. I feel so fortunate to be working for Canatrek at this time as the industry is coming into itself. It feels like we're literally flying the plane as it's being built. It's so amazing to work with the other growers here who are equally as passionate about the plant as I am. It's an incredible feeling to know that all of our hard work throughout the week results in medicine for people who really need it. It's incredible to be working in a world-class facility like this and I'm really glad that you guys got to come and check it out with me today.